My name is Dion Devao and I'm a proud Australian. And I'm also very proud of the fact that I'm an Indigenous Australian. And uh, one of the things I love about being Australian and about this country is that we're a nation um, that's filled with many different cultures. Uh, many different peoples from all around the world call Australia home and uh, I'm really fascinated and intrigued and I love to hear about the stories of the peoples that have come to this country and the reasons as to why they call Australia home. And we have a rich culture with the country, many rich cultures. And um, before colonisation, before the white man came here, um, it was just us blackfellas, Indigenous Australians. And we were made up of many different cultures and many different countries. So this land has always been populated um, by people from many different nations. And this is Aboriginal Australia. These different borders and these different uh, colours indicate the different countries that make up Australia, Aboriginal Australia. And every one of those different colours indicate a different tribe, a different nation, a different mob, as we like to say. And in all of these different countries, there's different languages and uh, different customs. And um, we've practised our, our culture and these customs through, through song and through, through dance and through art and through storytelling for over 65,000 years. And uh, that culture is still continuing today. And um, I'm very proud of that. And I think as Australians, we are learning more and more to celebrate and embrace all the different nationalities that make us Australian. And I'd like to send out an inv invitation to you all tonight, um, my fellow Australians, my fellow non-Indigenous brothers and sisters, to really embrace Indigenous Australian culture as part of being Australian, as part of being um, your own culture. Um, again, we are the oldest living culture in the history of mankind, and that's just not for Indigenous Australians to keep to ourselves. We need to be able to share that, and we want to share that with you today. So I invite you today to mark this day as your start of a journey of embracing our culture as part of your own. And one way to do that is to um, understand where we are. Um, again, looking at all of these different countries, no matter where you go in Australia, you're in someone else's country. And unless you're a traditional owner of that country, then you're a visitor. And so if you look at this country and think about the countries that are in these, these lands um, and liken that to, say, Europe, for instance, and, you know, when you go overseas and you go to somewhere like Italy or France or Belgium or Spain, what do you want to do? You want to learn possibly a little bit about their language, at least how to say hello and goodbye or how do I get a good feed? Um, and you want to learn about... Uh, their culture, visit some, you know, historical and uh, um, significant places in that country. Um, and you also want to connect with the people. That's, that's really important and, and I would encourage you, wherever you are, to connect with the people of the countries that you're living in and visiting and working in and coexisting with in our country. Each of those places has an Aboriginal mob. And, you know, we're connected so easily today through technology and there's no excuse for us not to be able to do some research around who are the traditional peoples of that area or the areas that we are existing. You know, none of all Nambri people, I just want to acknowledge all of the mob from this area. Uh, none of all Nambri people have been very, very welcoming and... Uh, They've just been beautiful to me and my family. I was lucky enough to come here, you know, over 25 years ago um, as a young man to go to university. And uh, I attained my university education here on Ngunnawal country. I met and married my beautiful wife, Danielle, who's here tonight um, on this beautiful country, Ngunnawal country. And my, few, my, my three beautiful children uh, have 
were born and are being raised in this beautiful country. And so I'd really like to acknowledge again the Ngunnawal Ngambri people because they've been so accepting of both my black and white family. My wife is non-Indigenous with Scottish and English and um, Jewish heritage and um, it just goes to show again the diversity of Australian culture and you know we are so multicultural and, and we have a rich culture and I'm really proud of that. I teach my children to value their non-Indigenous heritage as much as they um, you know, to embrace and acknowledge their um, Aboriginal heritage. And we're really lucky in Australia in that we have two separate Indigenous peoples. We have the Aboriginal people of this country who mainly inhabited the mainland of Australia and we have the Torres Strait Islander peoples who are considered Melanesian and mainly populated an area of islands in between uh, the tip of Australia and Papua New Guinea. They're considered Melanesian and are very similar to the peoples of Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea. Um, and I'm very lucky in that I am of both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander heritage. On my the father's side, we are from an island or a group of islands across from Townsville called the Palm Island Groups. And we are called Mambara. Mambara people as in Mambara means canoe people because we lived on an island and that's how we got around. We'd cut trees down and make canoes and go to the mainland, fish, hunt, connect with the mob over there, trade. And I'm obviously, again, really proud of my Aboriginal heritage, but I also have heritage that stems from Tanner Island in Vanuatu um, as a result of the fact that uh, from, the 18, from 1860 here in this country to the early 1900s, there was a slave trade. And the s slave traders were called blackbirders and they were generally uh, non-Indigenous or white settlers that cruised the Pacific looking for and um, obtaining Pacific Islanders, stealing them essentially and bringing them to Australia to work as slaves in the cane fields of northern Queensland. And a lot of Aboriginal people in this country have this heritage. And this is a story that's not really shared and, and known amongst our fellow Australians. It's not taught in our history and it needs to be taught. And it needs to be shared because, you know, I'm Australian, you're Australian. It's a part of my history. And if it's a part of my history and we're all Australian, then it's part of your history. And um, the story is, is that my great, 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 great grandfather was a 12 year old boy um, playing as children do on the shores of beach line of Tana Island in Vanuatu. And he was enticed onto a boat by a slave trader and was stolen and taken away from his island and brought to Australia to work as a slave in the cane fields of northern Queensland. And if you can imagine a 12 year old boy being taken away from his home, from his country, brought to a strange land and forced to work as a slave, uh, imagine his parents never seeing their 12 year old son again, ever, wondering where he was or whatever happened to him. Uh, and it's a sad story, um, but it's a part of our history. It's a part of my history. And again, if it's a part of my history, it's a part of your history. And I'd really encourage you to um, do some research about the things that we're not taught about Australia's history that, um, you know, is hidden. And I also have heritage from the Torres Straits and my grandmother I was a proud um, Torres Strait Islander woman. And we come from an island called Darnley, or Edab in our language. And Edab was the first um, island within the Torres Straits to be uh, where, whereby Christianity was introduced in 1871. And Christianity is a big part of Torres Strait Islander culture and tradition today, and we celebrate uh, the introduction of Christianity into the Torres Strait Islands every year on July 1. It's called the Festival of the Coming of the Light. So it's probably another thing that I could encourage you to do some research about because um, Indigenous Australians are very spiritual, um, both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And I think that's, that's why we adopted and um, we were so um, receptive to, you know, the missionaries and London Missionary Society bringing, you know, the gospel 
to, to our peoples. But my grandmother um, was a pearl diver and like many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, moved away from the islands to the mainlands to work, um, to send money home to her families, uh, her parents, her extended family. And it was there that she met my grandfather, who was an African-American soldier. He was stationed in, in and around uh, Cairns during the Second World War. They fell in love. My grandmother became pregnant with my mother and uh, my grandfather went off to war. This is the only picture that I have of my grandparents because I never met my grandfather and neither did my mother. And as a result of the times, um, for black American people and soldiers, they'd have to ask or get permission from the military, a high-ranking official within the US military to uh, marry the, the person that they loved. And uh, in Australia at that time, there was there were policies, a white Australian policy, that restricted any people or any persons of colour to come to this country and migrate from another place and to live here. So, you know, my grandparents never had a chance. And uh, it's a really sad story. And my grandmother never ever remarried. <clears throat> my mother grew up without a father. And as a result of her not being able to be with the man that she loved. She suffered a huge depression, a mental illness for the rest of her life. And uh, it's really sad. But it's a part, again, a part of my history and it's a part of Australia's history. And I'm very proud of my Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander heritage and um, my African American heritage and my South Sea Islander heritage. But it's something that is a part of me because of Australia's history. And it's not all doom and gloom. I had a fantastic upbringing, and I was born and raised in Darwin from two beautiful parents, Lynn and Mark DeVal, and they raised me to learn to serve the Lord, to trust in God first and foremost, to trust and believe in myself, to get a university education, and to do whatever I could with respect to my career, to do whatever I could to help my people. And I've done that for the past 25 years, which is what brought me to Canberra. Um, and sometimes I wonder, um, when will I ever get the opportunity to go home to my country? You know, our country calls us. Um, and to go home to your country, to the place where your heritage stems from, can only be described as, you know, being filled by the Holy Spirit. and. Not everybody experiences that, but I, I sometimes wonder, well, where do I go? As an Indigenous Australian, where do I call home? Home. I'm, I'm Aboriginal from, from Palm Island, Mumbara. I'm Torres Strait Islander from Darnley Island, Edab. I have African American heritage. I have um, heritage from the United States of America, Louisiana and where I've never been. I've even got some non-Indigenous blood there somewhere. Um, we won't go into that. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I think that you know, I am just an example of um, the diversity of, of Australian peoples, the diversity of Indigenous Australians. And in, in saying to you people, my fellow Australians, well, come and learn about my heritage, well, I need to reciprocate that and, and teach you about, you know, the circumstances that have brought me here today and what makes me an Australian, and in particular, an Indigenous Australian. And because of my upbringing, because of my strong faith in, in God, and again, Indigenous Australian peoples are very spiritual. And we had stories of Biami and the creators and our um, our God before white men ever came here. And I understand that, you know, we are mind and we are body and we are spirit. And sometimes we, come, we, be, we can become connected from those three things that make us spiritual beings. But if we connect to ourselves, if we connect to our minds, and if we connect to our bodies and our spirits, then you know, we're at home with ourselves. And if you're at home in here, then you can be at home anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where you are. If 
if you're at home with yourself um, and you're present, then, then you can be anywhere in this, in this world and, and call that place home. And, uh, you know, we are Australian and Australia is our home. And so we need to learn about our history, the good and the bad, the black and the white. And, you know, to understand the community, we need to be a part of the community. And, and we identify with each other through our stories. And so I, again, urge you, I invite you to share your stories with us. I invite non-Indigenous Australia to tell me your story. Tell us your story or your stories. Thank you.